welcome to Still Speak Podcast. So, wow, okay, I commented on my video from this morning about the Murdaws, uh, an update, but I'm not so sure everybody will see that, so I decided to make a video as well. So, <laughs> this morning, I did a video very early, I recorded it, then I got the kids ready, we headed out for breakfast, and then we went to Walmart to go food shopping, so... I'm in there, and I'm food shopping, kids in tow, pushing this 150-pound shopping cart, it feels like, sweating my butt off, and making sure not to lose a kid, and all of a sudden, my phone is going absolutely nuts in my bag that was buried underneath the groceries, and I'm like, what is my phone going off like this? This is crazy. So I go digging through to get my phone, I pull it out, and what do you know? What do you know? Alex Murdaugh was arrested. It felt like one of those speaking of the devil type of moments because I just spoke about him right prior to going food shopping. Alex was arrested upon his release from a drug rehab facility in Orlando, Florida. So now we have our answer on where he was. Because this morning in my video, I mentioned that the lawyer said that he was in Atlanta, saying in, you know, past tense, and I posed the question, is he in hiding? Did he go to another rehab facility? Is he still in Atlanta? And he just said it wrong. But now we have our answer. It seems he switched facilities at some point and moved to the one in Orlando. Alex was taken into custody first thing this morning by the State Law Enforcement Division and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement at the rehab facility in Orange County. So about the time I was recording this was happening and I had no idea, Murdaugh was taken to the Orange County Correction Center to await his extradition hearing. Ah, the infamous Orange County Correction Center home of the once jailed Casey Anthony. Orange County is also the same place where the murder of 19-year-old Mia Marcano has just unfolded, and unfortunately the suspect in that case took his life. Her story recently gained uh, national attention as well. His attorneys, Alex's attorneys, said he'll be taken to Buford County. He'll appear before a judge for a bond hearing. But it wasn't very clear on when the extradition hearing would actually occur and uh, when he would be back in South Carolina. And a spokesperson with the state attorney general's office said that the bond hearing was not expected on Friday. Alex is charged with two felony counts of obtaining property by false pretenses. This is on top of the other three felony charges for insurance fraud, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, and filing a false police report. This arrest and charges were connected to the stealing of insurance settlement money meant for the sons of his late housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield. Do any of you, and I'm really not trying to be funny here, but kind of, sort of, do any of you, when you listen to this story or you see this story somewhere, think of the game Clue? These names, Murda, Satterfield, <laughs> it just seems so, I don't know, it just sticks out to me for some reason. I constantly think of Murda in the library with a knife. I know, I can't help it. And I may be showing my age here because do people even play Clue anymore? That was such a good game. Anyway, so just because we're keeping tabs on this mess, we have five charges total so far for Alex Murda, six open investigations with SLED, and five lawsuits against Alex Murda. I was joking about speaking of the devil, but we're close to 666 now. One more charge and one more lawsuit and we're there. I haven't actually dug into Alex Murdaugh's past yet. You know, things prior to uh, the murder of his son and wife, except, of course, his history with his family and the law firm and things like that. 
and I could be wrong, but I would assume he doesn't have any type of criminal history, and I know that when he was arrested in September, he bonded out fast, and I don't believe he spent any time in jail. And since he was arrested in Orange County, and he hasn't been extradited yet, I have to say, is this the first time that Alex Murda has spent a night in jail? I'm going to have to double check that, but I believe it is. Which, of course, there's great irony in this, right? He's a lawyer. How many times did he visit a jail to meet with a client, and now he's in jail? The case is just really fascinating. At this point, Netflix has their uh, work cut out for them on their next series, because this one is just... mm -mm -mm. This story is just... mm -mm -mm. The great thing about Netflix is you can wait till a show is all the way on there and then just watch it straight through, right? And with this, it reminds me of old school television where you had to wait a week and then the next episode would come out and then you'd have to wait. It's all the suspense. This is kind of how this is unfolding. It's like constantly having to wait for these updates instead of just watching it all the way through to the end. Besides Ozark, any Ozark fans out there? Oh my gosh, love it. But I have been waiting, as I watched it last spring, I have been waiting over a year and a half now for this last uh, season. Would they hurry up? Because seriously. About six weeks after being appointed to handle the estate of Paul Murdaugh, uh, Randolph, his uncle, has resigned as being in charge of the estate citing a conflict of interest. Quote, due to recent discovery of events, I now have a conflict of interest and can no longer serve as personal representative for the estate of Paul Terry Murda. And he wrote this to a judge um, that he wanted to uh, resign. And this is actually the second time the estate of Paul Murda has changed hands within the family. I did not see this information until today, so I wanted to share it because it's really stuck out to me. It says that on August 27th, eight days before Alex Murda's entire botched insurance fraud scheme, he signed away his rights to administer the estate and he asked his older brother to do it. That's really fascinating because eight days prior, this makes me think this botched uh, scam, scheme, whatever you want to reference it, was premeditated. He knew that he was going to be doing this and therefore handed it over to his brother. It kind of reminds me of the June 4th where they were filing a motion to get Murdaugh's financial records, and then three days later, Paul and Maggie end up killed, right? So now you have August 27th, he's like, hey, big bro, take over my son's estate, and eight days later, you have this shooting on the road. And what's interesting is that Randolph actually wants the younger brother, John Mervyn Murdaugh, to handle the estate. Which is odd because he's also the brother of Alex Murdaugh and he's also the uncle of Paul Murdaugh. So if it's a conflict of interest for the older brother, why is it not a conflict of interest for the younger one? And there's been no explanation as to what recent discovery caused it to be a conflict of interest. So that's actually all for now. I really just wanted to come to you with that. Uh, my phone was going nuts with alerts, and um, so I knew about it rather quickly. Some of you who follow the news probably saw it quickly, or if you also get notifications. But I did notice today when I got back is that it wasn't really on my social media feeds. Normally, when something happens in this case, my feed is all Alex Murdaugh articles. I didn't see a single one on my Facebook account today, which was really odd. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a video just in case nobody else heard um, and we could discuss it. And now that there's going to be an extradition and a bond hearing and Lord knows what else, 
obviously there'll probably be another update within the next couple of days. So until next time, I'll see you soon.